I originally designed this project to be built using a single sheet of walnut veneer plywood for the exterior top side and a sheet of Baltic birch for the interior underside of the table. I thought that the contrast would have a really cool effect, but unfortunately walnut was out of stock at my local dealer, so I'm using two sheets of birch plywood. The design of this piece called for everything to be double stacked plywood, both for design and for rigidity. I began the project by measuring and ripping down what would later become the top part of the table, and I ripped both pieces at the same time, clamping them together and first using my track saw because my table saw simply couldn't cut something this large. Once cut, I can move over to the table saw, setting my fence at its max 30 inch capacity, and then ripping each of the pieces one at a time to their near final width, and then ripping down what would later become the two sets of side pieces and the bottom piece. I'm always fascinated by what you can build with furniture grade plywood. It can really make for some of the coolest looking furniture. Next up was laminating the two pieces of each of my table components together, which was as simple as spreading out glue evenly on all of my surfaces using a silicone spreader to make sure that all of the areas were properly covered. Then I took my time to line up all the corners. Now I don't have a clamping system for a glue up like this, so my solve was to use brad nails that would be hidden on the underside of the table to help tack things in place while the glue cured. I used a drywall square to mark out a grid on the piece so that my nails were uniform in their coverage, and then just began the process of nailing in one inch brad nails to each section. The next day, after the glue cured, I could begin cutting my pieces to their final size, using a mixture of the table saw to cut the large pieces, my track saw, where the table saw was just too small, as well as some painter's tape to help prevent tear out, as well as my cross cut sled for the smaller pieces. Once my pieces were in their final dimension, now came the fun part. The table is made up of two different angles that really help bring together the modern looking design of it. The legs sit at 30 degrees inward from the top of the table, and they also taper at 25 degrees inward to give it a modern profile. To do this, I first set the blade to 30 degrees on my table saw, and then I passed each of my legs through the blade. Then I could move the fence to the other side, making the same pass on the other side of the piece, being careful to make sure that I was creating a parallelogram, not a rhombus as that would mess up the overall design that was going for. Once each leg was cut, I went back to my sled and used my digital protractor to measure 25 degrees. This would allow me to create the tapers on each leg and make sure everything was perfectly even. And you can see how, by measuring things out correctly, this is how the legs will look. They'll both taper inwards as well as sit at an angle, and I loved how these came out. Now a concern of mine was clamping the legs to the piece because the angles didn't allow you to use standard clamps for it. And there really just wasn't a good way at all to do it, no matter how many different ideas I thought of. What I came up with was a jig that would rest at 30 degrees underneath the underside of the table, and using a few squeeze clamps would hold the legs in place while the glue dried. Now before moving on to the next step, I held the piece in place and to avoid more cleanup after I did the glue up, I marked out where the glue would go and I laid some painter's tape down to prevent squeeze out from hitting that part of the wood. It just was going to be too difficult to get my sander in there after the fact. Now realizing I needed a way to clamp this little jig that I had made to the leg as well, I went over to the bandsaw and cut out a notch so that the jig could clamp both to the base of the tabletop piece as well as the leg while I held it in place. Once I had things built and taped off, I could then add glue to the joints and spread out evenly for coverage, and then drop my piece into place and hold with the squeeze clamps. Realizing I needed more downward pressure, I used the off cuts of my legs, first clamping them horizontally on the inside and outside of the leg. I could then clamp down vertically to the tabletop, and I repeated that process three more times in each corner of the table, which was really, really effective in clamping these pieces in place at a really tricky angle. Now birch veneer is really thin, so my main concern was just to take down the high points on all six of the surfaces using some 120 grit paper on my orbital sander, followed by some 220 grit hand sanding on all of the surfaces, including the edges and the corners to break away any of those sharp corners. Now even though this felt sturdy, I knew that end grain to veneer could fail on me in the long term, so I wanted to add dowels to reinforce those joints. Now my dowel jig doesn't reach far enough inward, so I had to improvise and make a new one. Now there weren't any good ways to clamp this jig to my table, so what I ended up doing was just holding the jig in place as best I could and I drilled slowly to prevent any vibration or movement, 
and it worked out just fine, and I repeated this in each corner as well as in the middle of each leg of the table. Next, I moved over to my table saw and cut out half-inch maple dowels. Then I moved back over to the table and inserted each of those dowels using just glue, hammer, and a scrap piece of plywood to help prevent any damage to the dowel itself. Now, I didn't want to damage the veneer when flushing things up, so I put down some painter's tape around the dowel and I used my Japanese pole saw to help cut those dowels flush. And then just did a quick pass using my orbital sander to make it perfectly smooth. And I was really pleased with how it came out. Now if it were up to me, I would have left this piece as is and just applied a clear coat to help leave that beautiful birch plywood exposed. But my sister, who I was making this table for, who has darker furniture, wanted a darker color. I came to a compromise with her that we would only stain the outside layer and leave the underside as well as the plywood layers untouched. To do this, I masked off all of my vertical edges using some painter's tape and used an X-Acto blade in some of the places to help flush up the tape to the edge. You saw me use mineral spirits to clean off the surfaces of excess dust before, and the next step was then to just wipe in a coat of preconditioner to help the stain take better to the veneer. I ended up using an espresso color for the table, and it was the color that best matched my sister's current furniture, and I was surprised at how well the stain took to the plywood, and how well the tape prevented any stain from reaching those exposed plywood layers. It was the next best thing to actually having some veneered walnut plywood. Now taping off the edges didn't come out as perfect as I hoped it would and although this was furniture grade plywood it did have some gaps in those plywood layers so before finishing I went back and filled in those voids to help give the final piece kind of a cleaner overall look and then I sanded down all of those edges before moving on to finishing. To protect the finish I'm using a simple wipe on polyurethane which I applied to all of my surfaces this time sanding down with 320 grit paper in between to smooth things out. And I'm about 165 pounds, so here's a good indication of how strong and rigid this table is. The last thing to do was add rubber feet to this. These feet are about 3 quarters of an inch tall and are as simple to install as just marking out where you want them to go, drilling a hole, and then screwing into each of the corners of the feet of the table. And with that installed, the table was finished.